name is Man Slat. Question. Do you recall when you were born? Answer. I can only recall the year, but not the day and the month. I was born in 1945. President, thank you. And what is your current address? Answer. I am residing in Village 5, Swai Kleang Commune, Krujma District, Kampung Cham Province. Question, what is your occupation? Answer, I am aging now. I do not have any occupation, but I, I am living under the, su the support of my children. President, what are your parents' names? Answer. Taman is my father's and my mother's name is So Slamas. Question. And what about your wife? What is her name and how many children do you have together? Answer. My wife's name is Mat Kauja. We have two children together. President, thank you. Once again, this civil party is assisted by Lumbun Hu, a TBO staff, to assist him mentally and physically during the hearing uh, of his suffering. Mr. Sman Manslet, as a civil party, you may make a victim's impact statement, if any, concerning the crimes which are alleged against the two accused, and also harm suffered by you during the Democratic Republic year, resulting in your civil party application to claim collective and moral reparations for physical, material, or mental injuries as direct consequences of those crimes. And these crimes are alleged against the two accused, Nun Chia and Kil Sampond. And uh, these crimes uh, were committed during the period of uh, 17 April 1975 up to the 6th January 1979. And during the hearing of the victim impacts testimony, and as requested by the lead co-lawyer for civil parties, the chamber will now give the floor to the lead co-lawyers for civil parties to put questions to the civil party about the impacts and sufferings endured by him in relation to the treatment of uh, jam people. Good afternoon, Mr. President, once again. May I seek the floor for lawyer Gum Meng Ki to put questions to this civil party. And Gum Meng Ki is the lawyer representing this civil party. President, yeah, you may now proceed. Gum Meng Ki. Gum Meng Ki. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Thank you very much. And good afternoon. Your honors and everyone in and around the courtroom, as I, as far as you are concerned, I am the lawyer for Man Slash, and I will put questions to him in relation to the suffering endured by Jam people. Before I put the questions to you, I would like to inform and uh, I would like to ask uh, some preliminary questions. First, I know that uh, you uh, are having 
the abdominal pain. I would like to know whether you can provide your testimony in this hearing. Mansle. Answer, it's, it's fine, lawyer, since I uh, want to addressing the chamber, particularly in relation to the sufferings uh, which was inflicted by the Khmer Rouge. Lawyer, thank you. I will put so short and simple questions and please focus and pay attention to my specific questions. My first question is as follows, as follows. In relation to uh, the suffering happen, happenings to Cham people in Swai Kleang. So could you tell the court so what or was the suffering inflicted on Cham people? Answer. Khmer Rouge came to my village and worked with the village chief. We, Cham people, were told and instructed to cut our hair short, and we were not allowed to pray. Number three, we were prohibited from uh, going up into our houses to find some uh, Qurans, holy books. Question, what else did you endure during the Democratic Kampuchea and also what was the suffering uh, inflicted on other Cham people? beside what you described. Answer. At that time, Khmer Rouge people arrested the religious leaders, Hakim, Haji, and religious teachers as well. And among them, there was my father, Answer. Regarding the arrests of Jam people, and I would like to focus in particular the arrest of your father. What infraction of mistakes which led to the arrest of your father, and what was the impact on you and your family after the arrest of your father? Answer. My father was uh, working the field behind the village, during which the Khmer Rouge arrested him and put him in, put him on a horse cart. He was taken to the district hall. Later on, my siblings and my mother, including me, were. I uh, felt so sorry for my uh, father, and uh, we uh, were weeping secretly, not allowing other neighbors to know that we were not happy with that incident. Question. After your father had been arrested, w where were you? and your family members are uh, sent to? Answer. As I said, my father had been arrested and he was sent to the district hall. Since that time, we have never seen him 
again. We uh, missed we miss him so terribly, and every time uh, we and Cham people are holding the religious ceremony, there is no presence of my father. Question. Was there persecution inflicted on you and family members uh, beside the arrest of your father. President, please observe the microphone, Mr. Civil Party, before you speak. Civil Party. During the time, the youth group banked the drum and the water buckets in order to call young people to rise up and resist the Khmer Rouge since we came to understand that we no longer could survive and we had to resist in order we had to resist for the survival of our religion. Question: After the rebellion or resistance, what was the response to that rebellion? Answer: I was engaged in the rebellion, possessing machetes, and I w was joining with others. Many people, I mean both sides. We, Cham people and Khmer Rouge, died during the rebellion, but not many Khmer Rouge died since they were armed with weapons more than all of us. After one day and one night of rebellion, we, Cham people, laid down the weapons and we. were defeated and Khmer Rouge mobilized all of us into the tobacco kiln and for men, women and children they were put in a pagoda. We then were deprived of meal. We were allowed only a bowl of a watery porridge. And during that, while I was detained, I missed my family members and siblings. I did not know at the time how suffering uh, they were. Perhaps they had uh, been through the suffering as I had at the time. We were separated uh, from each other after the rebellion. Lawyer, thank you. You stated that uh, you were arrested and placed in a tobacco kiln. And did they allow you to sleep uh, properly, or was that place uh, sanitary enough for you to stay? And were windows and door closed completely? at that tobacco chamber or kiln, there was enough space, but there was no sanitation at all. The place was full of dogs, uh, it's Christmas. And while we were there, our names were registered one after another and people kept uh, disappearing from time to time and it was lucky for me to survive. But, uh, Lawyer, thank you. You stated that names were registered and biography was collected and after that biography 
taken, people disappeared. So could you elaborate uh, what happened next after a biography was taken? Answer. The reason that they making and collecting biography was that they was trying to search for the ringleaders of the rebellion. As, uh, and as I said, I was lucky enough to survive. Question. At that time, were you so worried since uh, you were called to declare your biography? Answer. I was trapped, but I did not uh, think of myself. Uh, I was worrying of my uh, family members, and in particular my wife, who was uh, three months pregnant. I, I mean, my wife uh, d had delivered the baby uh, three months, had just delivered the baby, mm -hmm. and uh, I uh, was so worried about her and my uh, family members. Question. You stated that uh, you were so worried about your wife and family members, and when uh, did you stop worrying? Answer. I felt a bit relieved ten days later, five or ten days later, because I was allowed to gather together with my family members and wife. And after we met, we were sent to live in Stung Trong District, Sampir commune. My wife and I, together with the Three months in front were together for my uh, mother and uh, my other siblings. Three of them were sent to Rokak now. We were not allowed to stay together. Question. You stated that you felt a bit relieved later on, but let, you, let me ask you about your physical strength of you and your uh, wife and other. So were you uh, strong enough physically? Answer. I told the court already. My wife, my infant, and me were so pale. We were so skinny and bony. And uh, for my infant, uh, his or her head oh, were, uh, was a big, so big, and bigger than the, the body. Then I was sent to some peer commune, Stung Trong district, with my wife and the infant. After we arrived, Anka at that place asked our background of what I did in the past uh, regime, and in reply, I said I was a fisherman. I told the Anka there as I have just told the court. My wife was sent to work in the field, and as for my infant, uh, he or she was sent to stay with the elderly 
grob. Question. You went to work, said a lawyer, in Tung Trong district. Were you entitled to contact with your wife and were you able to visit your wife and your infant regularly? Interrupted by President. Please listen to the question carefully and wait until you see the light on the microphone during which you can also think of the answer to respond to the question. Answer. I was assigned to the fishing unit at the river, along the river. I would visit my wife once or two times a year, and two times at most per year. I could visit my infant only at night time. Why? Since my wife had to go to work at night time, and the same, uh, I could see my wife and infant at night, only at night time. My wife, as I said, uh, was so bony and skinny for my infant. His or her head was bigger than the body. Lawyer, thank you. You have just stated that you would see your wife uh, once a year and particularly only at night time. Were you worried when you saw her? And uh, at that time, did you think uh, what you wanted to do for your future? President, please hold on. Mr. Civil Party, you have the floor now. Gong some on. Gong some on. Mr. President, I would like to register my objection. The lawyer for Civil Party is asking the Civil Party to answer about what the Civil Party wanted to do for the future and also what did he think about the past. It is the question uh, was, it's not uh, seeking the facts of what, hap what was happening to him at the time. But, uh, I don't think there is any problem with the question put by the lawyer because uh, the lawyer for civil party wanted to address the court about the sentiment and also about the mental feeling and suffering hap which uh, occurred uh, it happened to him, so it is nothing, you know, it is not an issue with the question asked by the lawyer for civil party, so I would like to seek permission uh, to uh, allow the civil party to answer. President, the objection is overruled, the question is allowed. Menki, could you please reformulate your question? Thank you, Mr. President. My question earlier is about your worry and about your future. I, I did not ask you about what, uh, about your future at that time, what you want to do. But I want to ask, my purpose of the question is to ask you about whether or not you wanted to visit her once again after the first meeting, since uh, you were only allowed to uh, meet your wife, uh, not occasionally.
answer. I felt that I would die one day since uh, I was endured hardship. I was not allowed to have enough food and I was prohibited from practicing my religion. Question. Thank you. I would like to ask you about the tasks which were under your responsibility. What was the working what were the working conditions like for you and for other well, it's, was it so hard, the work that you do? Answer. While we were fishing together, there were four of us in a group. We had a boat. And among, the, among four of us, there was one Khmer who was in charge of the boat, and they were uh, observing us to be careful and to try to find fish. We had to fish day and night, and there was only one hour break for us. And we would go fishing early in the morning. There was no rest for day time, but for night time, we had a one hour rest for night time. Question. Thank you for your response, but I am really unsure about that. You said you would uh, be allowed to rest for an hour or so. Does it mean that you had to rest for one hour or so, and then you return to go and f to go fishing again? Answer. When I said we were allowed to rest, it means that we were not allowed to get on shore, but we actually rested on the boat for an hour or so, and then we had to uh, start fishing again. And the same pattern occurred after we had our meal. Question. For your food consumption, were you given sufficient food to eat? For example, the fish that you caught, was you, were you given fish? Answer. We, the group of four, were given four small fish uh, to eat. That is the fish that we caught. And the fish that were given to us were small, the size of a toe, a big toe. So for a group of four, we were given four small fish. Question. I now move on to another uh, topic. This is in relation to uh, occasional visits uh, and that you saw your relatives. Can you tell the chamber of your feeling when you met your family members?
and uh, one day I was assigned to find strings to fix the fishing net and I took the chance to quietly go to visit uh, my mother and my three younger siblings. However, my three siblings were sent to a work site and my uh, mother was uh, working near the house. I met her for a brief moment as I was afraid that I would be spotted. And on an, uh, a separate occasion, again, I was asked to find strings uh, to fix the fishing net. I went to visit them again and I didn't see them. So I asked uh, the villagers and I were told that my mother and three younger siblings were sent away and killed. Question. Upon receiving the news that uh, your family members uh, disappeared or killed, how did you feel? Answer. First of all, I lost uh, my father, and later on, I lost my mother and three younger siblings. So, this was a compounded effect on top of the loss of my father. When I returned to my fishing area, I waved quietly and my, work, uh, my colleagues asked uh, what happened to me. And I, uh, I lied to them that I had an abdominal pain. You stated that, that your father, your mother, and siblings were killed. Can you tell the chamber about uh, your wife and your child? What happened to them while you were not uh, with them? Please uh, tell the chamber any news that you received about your wife and your child. Answer. When I first went uh, to visit my mother, she told me that my younger siblings uh, were sent to work at the work site and that uh, they became so emaciated and that I would hardly recognize them if I were to uh, see them. And for the second time, I went to visit her again and I did not uh, see them. And as I said, when I returned, I waved uh, like a child. And when I was asked why I waved, I told uh, my uh, chief and the workers that I had an abdominal pain. Thank you, uh, Mr. Civil Party, and I'd like to hand the floor to Mr. Peyong, the National Lead Co-Lawyer, to put further questions to you.
topic on uh, Mr. President, I'd like to put uh, some questions to the civil party. And good afternoon, uh, Mr. Uh, Mansle. I only have uh, a few supplementary questions uh, to put to you in addition to the questions asked by uh, Main Key. Can you tell the chamber in uh, your name as a Islamic religious uh, follower how important is uh, religion to you? As well as to the general Cham people. Answer. We actually prayed five times per day in our name as the Islamic followers and we would never miss any occasion despite uh, any business schedule. And if we miss a prayer time, for instance, we could uh, substitute it by another prayer time for that particular day. Otherwise, we would be sinned ourselves as uh, committing a sin. Question. In your response to the question by Kim Min Ki, you stated that uh, you did not practice uh, your Islamic religion before or, or after 17 April 1975. How did you feel when you could not uh, practice your Islamic religion? Answer. As I have just stated, due to the abolishment of the Islamic religion, the Cham people in my village rebelled as they actually respected the religion strictly. Question. Did you secretly practice your Islamic religion? And so occasionally I secretly prayed when it was quiet. Of course, I was concerned that I would be tracked or monitored by the Khmerus. Questioned. You said you were concerned that you would be monitored by the uh, Khmerus uh, militia. Did you ever experience any uh, Khmerus militia coming to attract you or to monitor your activity? Answer. I saw them patrolling the street, but I did not know whether they came under the house to listen to us. Question. And what about your language? Were you allowed to speak your Cham native language freely? Answer. From that day onward, I did not dare to speak our language. And of course, when we did not see them, we would quietly speak our language. Question. What about the food uh, regime? 
where you force to eat food that you should not eat and if so could you elaborate a bit more and so uh, we the Cham people were prohibited from eating pork but when they uh, cooked food or they cooked gruel they actually put pork with oil in the gruel in f and when we were given the pork with gruel we actually tried to get rid of the soup and ate only the uh, rice some people could not bear it while others tried to eat in order to survive question now I'd like to talk about your living condition in Sampi. Can you tell the chamber what happened to you and your family or to other Cham families while you were uh, living in Sampi? Answer. I was uh, separated from my other family members. I was forced to overwork and I was given little food to eat. As for my wife, I was never allowed to uh, meet her during the daytime. And only at nightfall, I could once in a while to see uh, my wife. And that uh, was the same for my child. And that was the time that I felt uh, devastated. I felt so pity for my child and my wife. Look, uh, uh, Question. Could you tell the court the living uh, condition of your wife and child in uh, St. Pierre? President, uh, please uh, observe the microphone, the civil party. Civil party, she was given the same food ration as the rest. It was not uh, sufficient. Some other people hit uh, some rice in their house so they could uh, cook those rice and eat. However, for my wife, she did not have any uh, spare rice hidden in the house. Some other people would find supplementary food uh, with the leaves. Question. Did you know or did your wife tell you about the uh, living condition of other Cham people in some peer and what happened to them? Answer. When we arrived, when we were evacuated to the area, I saw other Cham people who were evacuated from other areas to uh, that uh, surroundings. However, uh, Cham people were living in uh, the nearby areas, but not in uh, some piece itself. Question. Maybe this is my uh, last question uh, to you. Currently, you are living in Swai Kleng. Can you tell the uh, chamber when did you return to live in Swai Kleng? And upon your return, 
did you see any of your relatives or any other Jam people returning to live in uh, Swai Clan? And so, when the war ended, uh, we returned to our native village. There were several other families who returned to uh, live in my village as well. As for the native villagers who used to live there, there were only about 50% uh, percent of them returned. And there were other villagers who came from other villages uh, to live in the Swai Clan. Question. Did you know how many uh, Cham people living in Sphai Klien prior to 17 April 1975? Answer. There were about eight, 800 to 1,000 Cham families living in Sphai Klien at the time. This is my personal conclusion only as I did not have any statistics or real figure. But uh, from what I knew, there were about a thousand Cham families. Question. I believe this is uh, my last question. You spoke about Ha Chi and Ha Kim, uh, who were the religious uh, elders in Zwei clan. And upon your return to Swai Kling, did you uh, see any of these uh, religious figures, including Tuns and uh, Hakims, returned? Answer. When I returned, more than half of the Chan people uh, did not return, including many of the religious elders. Only uh, later on, the, there were tunes who continued uh, the practice from the previous uh, tunes and uh, religious figures. Actually, my international colleague uh, has a question that I uh, would like to put to you and allow me to do that. From 1979 until uh, the times that Tunes, Imam, and Hakims uh, were elected in your village, can you tell us how many uh, months or years before such uh, people were elected or existed in uh, your uh, village? Answer. When the Khmer Rouge regime failed, uh, the religious elders uh, passed away as well. So younger uh, children actually went to study abroad at Arab Saudi countries or in Malaysia who continued uh, their religious uh, practice. And then there were uh, charms, that rather there were tunes who are uh, charm teachers who started uh, teaching the, the language as well as the uh, Khmer and the English languages to the people. Question. My question is about uh, the year that they actually came to your village. Can you recall? Answer. Uh, it happened in 1989. Great. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Civil Party, for answering my questions. And Mr. President, I conclude my session now. Thank you. President, thank you, and I'd like now to hand the floor 
to the co-prosecutors to put questions to the civil party if you have any. You may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Uh, Mansle. My name is Travis Farr, and I'm counsel for the prosecution. And I'll have a few questions for you as well this afternoon. Uh, you were just talking about issues related to the practice of Islam during the Khmer Rouge period. Can you tell the court whether there was a mosque in Sphai Kling, and if so, what happened to it during the Khmer Rouge era? Thank you for asking the question. At that time, nobody went to pray at the mosque, and so the Khmer Rouge prohibited us from doing so. And actually, cattle were put in the mosque, as well as tobacco was stored in the mosque. Thank you for that answer. Uh, I'd like to move to another topic now, back to the arrest of your father, which you've already described for us a little bit, but can you describe that event for the court in more detail, please? They came to arrest him while he was uh, working in the field, that is, at the cornfield behind the house. The Khmer Rouge came to arrest him and accuse him of being an enemy. And was anyone else arrested with him in that cornfield at the time that he was arrested? Yes. There were others who were arrested uh, together with my father. In fact, uh, about 50 to 60 people were arrested at a time. Later on, all of them were released except uh, five, including my father. I did not know the names of the other four individuals, although I knew they were, the sa they were living in the same uh, village. And to start with that big group of 50 people that you just mentioned, were all of those 50 people who were initially arrested, were they all Cham, or was it a mix of Cham and Khmer? They were all Cham people. There was no Khmer amongst uh, the arrestees. And just so we're clear on the timing, uh, did this arrest happen before the rebellion in Sphai Kling or after the rebellion in Sphai Kling? It happened uh, before the rebellion. So in this group of 50 people that was initially arrested, were there both men and women, or was it only men? There were men, women, and uh, children age from five and above. So it was a combination of men, women, and children. And can you estimate for us how many women and how many children there were in that group of 50? <coughs> there were not uh, many children and there were more uh, uh, adult people. And among those children, so they aged between five to 15. 
Okay, so can you tell us uh, who carried out the arrest? Who arrested these 50 people? It was the Khmer Rouge who made the arrest. They were black uh, uniformed and a chromal scarf around their neck. I did not know from which level they were, but I only knew that they were Khmer Rouge. Were you among this group of 50 people that was arrested at that time? Yes, I was amongst the 50. However, I was uh, subsequently released. And can you tell us where was the group held from the initial arrest until the point at which the majority of the group was released? We were arrested in the plantation fields. We were then tied up and placed to be under the house of the Khmer people. About a week after, we were released, and only five were placed on an ox cart, horse cart rather, and taken away, and a master five uh, was my father. Did your father have any position of seniority or importance in your village? He was the second assistant. Uh, you've called him the second assistant. Can you explain a bit more second assistant uh, to whom or for what? Kim was the chief, then there was a first deputy, and my father was the second deputy or second assistant. And when the chief was not uh, available, then the first deputy or assistant or the second assistant would act in the capacity of uh, the chief. In f the chief, I refer to Hakim, who was the religious uh, leader in the village. Okay, thank you for that clarification. What about the other four men who were taken away at the same time your father was taken away? Did they have any position of seniority in the village or any, any position of importance? Answer. Five of them had been arrested, and my father was among the group. Uh, they have never returned after the arrests. I just want to ask you about something in your civil party application. This is document E3-6714, and the page number in English is 0108-9919. In Khmer, 0056, 3974 to 75. And in French, 0113, 7854. And this is, you're, you're describing this event, and you say much of what you've told us now, that a big group was arrested, and then all but five that were, were released. And you say, but, but what you say about these five men is that these five men were senior persons working in the village, including a village chief and a deputy of the religion clan. 
that village chief named Kao and my cousin named Li Min. Uh, hearing that, does that refle refresh your memory uh, regarding the identity of some of those other men and their positions of seniority? Answer. There was a person by the name Gao and Li Min. That was another person, Li Min. That person was my cousin. Li Min was working in the village. And for Gao, he was the village chief. And just so the record is clear, those men were among the group of five that was taken away with your father, correct? Fine. Answer, that is true. Okay, thank you for that. Now you've, I think you told us they were taken in the direction of the district hall. Can you tell us where the district hall was? My uh, answer, it was located in Kurochma. That district office was belong to Kurochma district. And following that day on which you saw your father taken away in that cart, did you ever learn anything else about what happened to him after that? Answer. After my father had been arrested and his hands were tied behind his back, he was put onto a horse cart and he has disappeared ever since. And they, they I mean the other four, never returned. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I want to, well, okay, so you told us that this arrest happened before the rebellion. Can you tell us whether there were any other arrests that you were aware of um, that happened before the rebellion in Cycling? Answer. Regarding the arrest, the arrest had occurred from 1973 up until 1975, at which there was a rebellion. And this may be a difficult question, but are you able to estimate how many people from Svai Klang were arrested in total before the rebellion? So adding together everyone who was arrested in 73, 74, and 75 up through the rebellion, uh, can you estimate how many people that would have been? Was it 10, was it 100, was it 200? Answer, I cannot give you the estimate. I was simply an ordinary citizen, I cannot recognize all of them, their faces. I did not know, have the figure, I did not have the figure at the time, but what I know is that uh, many people uh, kept disappearing. Okay, thank you for that. Um, so turning now to the rebellion, can you tell, tell us how, um, how the, the villagers in Swai Kling, what President, please hold on. Uh, 
what is going on with the uh, lawyer for Nguyen Chia Sonoron. Where is he now? President, I notice there is no presence of uh, lawyers for Nguyen Chia, and it is now appropriate time for a short break. The chamber will take a short, short break from now until 5 to 3. Court officer, please assist uh, the civil party during the break time, and please invite him together with the TBO staff back into the courtroom at 5-2-3. The court's now in recess.